Hey, good evening. I hope everybody had a very Merry Christmas and you're ready for a new year. A great new year. Hope you're ready for it. Well, I am going to get started because I got a lot to say. This third part of this vision was very, uh, it was full. So, good evening, good evening. Thanks for joining. I'm going to jump right in here. And like I said, this tonight I'm talking about the third part of a vision. And I'm just going to run the first two really quick. In the, in the first one, I was sitting on this bench on a cliff. And Winston Churchill came and sat down beside me. And he threw me the V for victory sign. And come to find out, that was very significant in World War II. In the darkest days, of that was his pep talk to the folks. Don't give up. We are going to see victory. That was the first part of this. And then the second part of this vision, he and I are sitting there on this bench overlooking the ocean. And this huge ship comes in. Massive, massive ship comes in to this cliff. Five gangplanks come out onto the cliff. That's how big this ship was. And what that ship was carrying, or is carrying, let me rephrase that, is angelic soldiers from every war since the beginning of time there's there were they were dressed in uniforms from every battle we've ever heard of in our lifetime there was this massive vessel carrying the hosts of heaven coming into port it wasn't even a port coming into a place the enemy didn't know they were coming in getting prepared to be released onto this land to obviously deal with the battle at hand and I'll tell you this too really quick in that second part I know when I talked about it before I was talking about those soldiers being released onto our land already but I'll tell you what to be honest with you I've been wondering if they had been released off of that ship you know just kind of been waiting to see because when you I want to see that I want to see these hosts of heaven from all these centuries I want to see them get off I want to see them fight you know so I've really been waiting to see that thinking have they come off the ship yet and I'll tell you what happened is this this third vision I had answered that question for me if they had actually disembarked off that ship or not so here we go this is part three I it was Christmas Eve morning as a matter of fact and all of a sudden, I'm sitting on that bench again next to Winston Churchill. And the next thing I know is I hear an explosion behind me. So I turn around to look, and I see the fire. I see the smoke. And the next thing I know, Winston Churchill stands up and starts to walk toward the explosion. And as he gets up off of this bench, he, he, he speaks. He says, come, come, the time's near. And I thought, for what? And I asked him, I said, what, what time is that? And he said, the victory's at hand. And he puts his hands behind his back and starts walking toward this explosion. And so, well, I start walking with him because, yeah. So he and I are starting to walk toward the explosion. And the, the landscape, I know... I know this is about our nation. I know this is about right now, but the, as far as the eye could see, the land was absolutely scorched, if you can imagine. And there's still smoke and fire billowing up from this explosion. And I'm walking beside Winston Churchill toward this, into this scorched land, into the fire. And as we walk along, looking at all of this, he says, the rebuild will be supernatural. Wow. You know, we're, I, I'm looking at a scorched land, looking at complete devastation. And out of his mouth comes, the rebuild will be supernatural. From, from scorched to a supernatural comeback. Wow. Thank you, God. So we keep walking along. And I thought, I'm going to ask him a question. So I asked him, I said, 
I, are you part of the great cloud of witnesses? And he just kept walking along and all he said was for such a time as this. And I thought, oh my goodness, what? Winston Churchill, are you part of the great cloud of witnesses for such a time as this? Okay. That's that. Okay. That's my answer. We're still walking toward this devastation. And I, you know, as we're, as we're walking along again, my mind turns to the ship that had come in and you got these five gangplanks still waiting for this ship of soldiers to unload and disembark onto the land. And, you know, as he and I are walking the opposite direction, I'm still wondering when is that going to happen? Is that, has it happened? Did I miss it? What's going on here? And so I, I'm, I'm just, I finally thought I'm going to ask him, maybe he knows. So again, I asked Winston Churchill a question. I said, have those soldiers disembarked off of that ship? And without missing a beat, he said one word. He said, Kairos. Again, talk about an answer. The right moment, the right time. No, they hadn't, they hadn't come off yet. The answer was, in Kairos time, they will disembark off that ship. This massive ship of angelic warriors will come off that ship in Kairos. And so, again, this is a phenomenal thing happening here. As we continue our journey toward this explosion, I'm thinking about this and, and, and not even really realizing that I'm hearing a lion roar in the background. You know, and it just, it just seems fitting. So I didn't really think twice about it. So we're going on and on. And then there's so much going on. I'm still wondering about the ship. I'm wondering where we're headed. What is this experience about? And my mind is all over the place. And I kid you not to show you how real this was. <laughs> Winston Churchill points at his temple. And then points forward. And I knew the whole point was get your thoughts together. You know, get get your thoughts together and pay attention. And so, of course, that was very much a, a shaking for me. And I looked forward. And as I do, I start to see a lion walk toward us. And, well, you know, really, of course, why not? And this lion, very, very normal lion, except for its color. This lion was a silvery gray color and it's just, it's just simply walking toward us, slowly walking toward us. But the closer it got, the bigger it was and kept walking, kept walking. I'm still not sure what this is about. This line gets all the way to us until it's nose to nose with Winston Churchill. And it's so massive that he's having to look up at it and it's got its head down to be nose to nose with him that's how huge this lion was this silvery gray lion and I'm not even kidding it, it took a while because I'm literally sitting there going what is this what is this what you know I had no sense of what this was what was happening and then this this because this creature was honestly it, it was fierce and fearsome you know I mean I caught myself kind of thinking don't don't look at me you know it was just what is it? And I finally, it's standing nose to nose with Churchill. He still got his hand behind his back. And I asked, is this a friend or is this a foe? And all of a sudden, understanding came of what this lion was. And this lion was a picture of the ecclesia. And the color represented the, the wisdom, the age of this lion. And with this understanding, all of a sudden I realized it was a friend of Winston Churchill's. They were standing nose to nose because he knew that friend in World War II. That friend of Ecclesia in World War II. If you haven't heard the stories of Rees Howells, the, the intercessor in World War II, that's the kind of friendship we were talking about. You had this, basically a general, and his friend, the Ecclesia, 
that came together in World War II. But here's the other phenomenal part. It was gray because of the wisdom and the growth and maturity, but it had grown in size since he was here on earth with that friend. It was just the understanding came of that all of a sudden, and it was the ecclesia has grown. The ecclesia has matured since that time in this earth. It has grown to a bigger position in this earth, and now it was standing on our land prepared to see this battle that we're in finished. So I'm standing here watching this, getting this download of what I'm seeing. And then all of a sudden, that lion turns to me and literally it started to sniff me. And at that point, realizing what I'm standing there in front of, I just started going, yes. I mean, it was just oh, 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 giddy from the core. And this thing sniffs me and then it starts this, that, you know, that guttural growl that a lion can do. And it's just that rolling from the depths, this growl. And then, then all of a sudden I realize I turn and look at the ship again and Michael, the Michael, the angel Michael had stepped out onto the front of the ship and what had happened is that growl that was starting to come out of that lion, to come out of the ecclesia, is a sound that Michael recognizes. So the warrior archangel heard that sound of the ecclesia and came out to the front of that ship. And I'll tell you what, I can guarantee you he's in charge of the inhabitants and the occupants of that ship. I guarantee you. So when he heard the growl from the Ecclesia, Michael came out. And that's where the vision ended. But that's what I'll, I, that's where we are. We are in the time to where the Ecclesia has grown. The Ecclesia has you know what? The Ecclesia has woken up to who they are, their position, and what their job is on this earth to the point that it has grown in wisdom and maturity. And now's the time where we will see the Ecclesia team with the hosts of heavens, heaven, unlike we've ever seen in our lifetime. We are about to see a release that we have never seen in our lives. We are about to see the unleashing, unleashing of a pair, of a team, the Ecclesia, the hosts of heaven. We are about to see a team unleashed, unlike we've ever seen in our lives. But if you think about it, God's been preparing us for it for, pro you know, for our lifetime, but specifically over the last decade. He's been preparing us for this moment to where Ecclesia and the hosts of heaven come together because the victory's at hand. Come together to see not only America saved, but to see the world turned upside down, to see everything shift. And I know I, if you've had any kind of study on Ecclesia, if you have had any kind of wondering on Ecclesia, can I just say this? Hold on to your seat because we are about to see an unleashing like none of us can imagine in our lifetimes. Let me say this. The world as we've known it in our past is over. It's done. There's nothing. We're not going back to anything. If we go back, we lose ground. We lose all the ground that has been taken. But as we move forward, we walk into a kingdom, a kingdom that we, a, a kingdom understanding a kingdom life, unlike we've seen to this point. Okay, can I throw this little thing in too? I know where we are. I know with what we are dealing with in this nation. I know we got a lot of people that are afraid the world is over. We got a lot of people that are thinking this is it. The Lord's going to come get us at any point. But can I just simply, in my, in my terminology here in 2020, say it this way? What Jesus did 
will never return void. What Jesus brought and established on this earth for you and for me to walk in will never return void. And what I mean by that is he will never decide it's too bad. Let me go rip the kids out of there. No matter what I wanted Jesus to do, no matter what Jesus established, no matter how hard it was and what he went through, it's just too hard for my kids. I'm going to have to go rip them out and we're just going to have to call this earth done and done. I hope you can hear what I'm saying. I'm just trying to put it in, in understanding that will never, ever happen. And so what I am saying is if we don't, if we don't operate in the, the ecclesia, if we don't operate in God's governing body here on earth, if we don't make a stand right here on this hill, it will be left to generations down the line to circle back around and bring the thing to the intended victory that God said would happen on this earth. He will never change his mind about his kingdom being established on this earth, which means he will never rip us out. Say that's enough, come rapture us out, because it's gotten so bad. It's not going to happen. So I put this charge out. It's up to you, it's up to me, to stand our ground, to believe what God is telling us, and I'll tell you what he's told me individually, is V for victory. He told me that the victory's at hand. If you just tuned in, if you have time to go back, I, it was a third part vision about Winston Churchill, and I'll just say this, what Winston Churchill said to me is the time is near and the victory is at hand. And that doesn't mean we're being raptured out. It means the victory is coming into this earth and reestablishing things. It's going to turn things around. It's going to establish the original intent of God on this earth. And if you believe it, if you know, if you know that his will will never be voided, then there's an invitation for you to be a part of this victory. And I'm asking you, even if you're not sure, even if you've always believed, it's just going to get, it's got to get worse and worse and worse for us to be saved out of here. There's still, it, you're, it can all change right now. What Jesus did will never, ever be voided. No matter what man tries, no matter what government tries, no matter, they're all puppets of an evil agenda, no matter what evil tries, what Jesus established will never ever be voided. And I don't know about you, but I'm all in. I'm all in because of who Jesus is, because of what he did, because of the relationship I have with him. I can't give up. I can't give up because I know, I know what he has is so worth standing. It's so worth standing in this moment and seeing the victory that he said is at hand. The victory is at hand. Don't give up now. And can I say this? If you give up, it's a personal decision. It's not going to affect the full big decision. Hear me, I'm not getting onto anybody, but we gotta understand, we gotta wake up. If you give up, it's personal. If you stand your ground, it's not just for you and your family. It's for legacy. That's where we are, folks. The victory is at hand. Come, come in, join us. Let's all do this together because the victory is at hand. And let me say this, it's going to be so sweet. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to pull so many people in. The, the awakening is going to be so huge. We ha Our minds can't conceive what's ahead and how beautiful it is and how phenomenal. And I want to be a part of it. Are you with me? I'm all in. And I know you're with me. And I'm so thankful because we got to do this together. We have to do this together. I'm telling you. And if I could just sum up. Oh, man. So feel it in my core. If I could just sum up the last three videos I've done on this vision. It was the first one was V for victory. Winston Churchill sat down next to me. Flashed me the V for victory. Don't give up. 
In the second vision, huge ship came in that was filled with angelic soldiers that have been on this earth since God created them to fight alongside man for kingdom victory and kingdom establishing in this earth. That ship came in, but it had not, they, the, the occupants had not come off yet. And then here in this third vision, Winston Churchill said, come, come, the time's near, victory's at hand. And the ecclesia, this beautiful, wise, humongous ecclesia came up and started to growl this lion. And when that ecclesia started to growl, the Archangel Michael, the head of the armies, walked out on that ship because time is near when that ship will unload on this nation. And you know what that tells me? The victory that's at hand has a Kairos moment. And no, we haven't seen it yet. That's why things have felt so, what is going on? And we've been thrown from side to side to side. And get ready, y'all. Get ready. I, it, it's not going to be a magic January 6th. There are some things that are still being put in place. But the angels that are coming off of that ship and that are going to work with us, there's a Kairos moment. There is a right time for this to happen. And we are approaching it. I'm not going to keep going, but can I say, please don't give up. If you give up, it's a personal decision. If you hold the line and you stay in this fight, we together are going to see the most tremendous, I, I'll use the word revival, we are going to see the most tremendous revival anyone has ever seen in our lifetime, and it will be worth every ounce, every ounce of what we've all just walked through. So I'm going to stop there. Thank you. Thank you for holding your ground. Thank you for standing we can do this because God made us ready to do this. God bless you. Hold that line and get ready.